everybody, welcome to my complete guide for taking on the Mithril Dragons. The reason why I have it listed as a complete guide is because I cover all types of attack methods and many different inventory setups. Whichever method you'd like to use, this guide will have it included, leaving no one out on this guide. So it may seem very long, but there's no such thing as a too informative guide. To start things off though, let's take a closer look at what we're up against. These beasts come in at a healthy combat level of 304, including 2,540 life points, and being able to attack with all three attack styles, including the Decimating Dragonfire. But here's the good news, the max hit from these guys isn't too debilitating, and have a weakness to magic and stab attacks. Some of the rare drops from them, though, make the struggle all worth it, as they can drop Dragon Full Helmets, Draconic Visages, and the, the Elite Clue Scrolls. As far as stat recommendations go, I would say having over or close to 90 in attack, defense, strength, and constitution, also around 70 prayers recommended, and if using a familiar, I would say around 67. So let's get started with this guide. First we'll start off with talking about the melee gear and inventory setups. As you now see by the picture, you should just bring your best melee offensive and defensive items, except for a few key items. The only things out of a normal melee setup is wearing the Kirill's top and Kirill's skirt. You should wear something close enough to Kirill's to provide you a good magic defense, as well as a decent range defense. The reason for this is because you will be using protect from melee, Therefore, with Kirill's, I get good magic defense, and my Dragon Fire Shield with other items gives me a healthy range defense as well. Also, if you have the dragons assigned to you as a Slayer task, then your priority should be to wear a Slayer Helm. As for the weapon, it is strongly advised to use a strong stab attack weapon. If you're using a regular anti-fire potions, you will need a one-handed weapon because you will have to have a Dragon Fire Shield or an anti-dragon shield. I use Karasi's Sword. The only other alternative I suggest is a leaf bladed sword for stabbing. If, however, you are using a super anti fire potions, you will not need to wear a dragon fire shield and can use a Zamorak spear or a Karasi sword with a rune defender. Also, I generally just prefer Karasi sword due to the fact the special attack usually hits very strongly against the dragons. Now we will talk about the different inventory setups for melee. This first setup uses food. It is cheaper and much more affordable setup for most people. First, as always, you should bring a one-click teleport, a super attack and strength. A defense potion is not required since you're using protect from melee anyways. Next, bring two or three full anti-fire potions, followed by six or seven full prayer potions. The rest of your inventory should be full of high healing foods such as sharks or above. Also, stock your familiar with all food if using a beast of burden. Some players like to bring a bunyip or unicorn, but we will cover familiars later in this guide. Now the second setup may be seen as the more expensive, but if used properly, can potentially get you a lot more kills per trip. It is fairly simple, one click teleports around three or four anti-fire potions, followed by seven or eight full serodome and brews, and complement those with 12 to 14 full super restores. You will also see a 100 healing aurora squirrels in my inventory. This is obviously for the unicorns if you are able to summon them. If not, you can replace with other pouches or items. Again, we will cover familiars later. The second type of gear in inventory setup is for ranging. The stats using range, I strongly recommend having 90 plus range in order to make it most effective. Also a minimum of 70 fence and around 80 constitution is recommended. Again, 70 prayers recommended, and also we will talk about familiars later. The gear for ranging is fairly practical. Armadile helmet, curls top and skirt, accumulator ranging or snakeskin boots, rune crossbow or a chaotic crossbow. If you have the dragons assigned to you again, use your slayer helm. The key items here though are the dragon fire shield and enchanted ruby bolts. While yes, the Dragon Fire Shield does hurt your range attack and the normal Anti-Dragon Shield does not, I still prefer the Dragon Fire Shield because it gives a better magic defensive bonus. And while ranging, you will be praying against his range attacks, therefore you should only focus on magic defense. The Ruby Bolts are very effective against the Dragons due to their high health. You can hit up to 508 life points when they're at full health, and around half health though it is advised to switch to enchanted diamond bolts or emerald bolts 
which will be kept in your inventory until they are at half health. Now for covering the inventory for range, it is very similar to the melee setup, a one-click teleport, a ranging potion, three or four anti-fire potions, and seven or eight prayer potions. The rest of your inventory can be food. Also, as I mentioned a bit ago, you will have the enchanted diamond bolts after the dragon is at half health, that you will switch to those. These will help hit through their defenses very well. Also, since I have no other special purpose weapon, I like to bring my enhanced Excalibur for recovering my health. Now, as the same with the melee setup, the method for using brews while ranging is pretty similar. A one-click teleport, enhanced Excalibur, three or four anti-fire potions, six or seven full Ceridome and brews, and around 12 full super restores. Also, do not forget your diamond bolts or your emerald bolts, and a familiar as well will be, discuss will be discussed later. And the third gear and inventory setup will be for those wanting to use magic. Magic can be the most effective way, but it may take quite a bit of money and take some getting used to. But if you are wishing to use magic, then I strongly recommend having at least 80 or 85 magic, complemented with 70 defense and around 80 constitution, and as before, 70 prayers recommended for effective trips and summoning will be later. Now for the gear, the gear is pretty specific and is why magic is not too commonly seen, but can work extremely well if used properly. As with range, it is fairly practical using RMs with arcane stream necklace. An RMs hood will be more effective than my equipped helm of Nance at Knot. And of course, if you have the dragon as a task, use your Slayer Helm over anything else. The key items here, though, are the God Cape and the Staff of Guthix. The God Cape can be of any type, as you are using this because you will want to be using the Charge spell in the normal spellbook, which requires you to be wearing one of the three God Capes. This is because, though, it will increase the max damage of your Claws of Guthix spell to be raised from 200 to 300 max life points of damage, as well as the Arcane Stream Necklace damage increases. The reason why Claws of Guthix is recommended though is because on a successful hit, the opponent's defense will be lowered by 5%. You may also replace your Guthix Staff with a Void Mace to even give you a greater damage boost. If you do not wish to use Claws of Guthix, however, you can use Fire Wave or Fire Surge, which should be cheaper, and they also both provide and prove to be an extremely effective way with this change though it is recommended to replace your guthic staff with a staff of light and your cape may remain there for the high magic attack bonus or equipping a soul wars cape in place of a god cape to give a higher prayer bonus now for the inventory setup while maging as always one click teleport excalibur for healing a magic potion enough runes to cast at least 300 of the spell you wish to use and if using charge, bring another for around 20 cast or so. Using two or three anti-fire potions and then around eight or more prayer potions as your prayer bonus will not be as high as the other setups offer and fill the rest with sharks. Now the most effective way though for making your magic trip effective is also the more expensive inventory. The one-click teleport Excalibur runes for at least 300 cast of the spell you wish to use and since you will be there longer I'd bring around three or four full anti-fire potions six to eight full sardom and brews and the rest could be super restores as well as bring a, a high healing familiar with scrolls as with the other brew setups though you may run out of space to carry items so you may wish to bring a beast of burden instead but it depends on what you are killing the dragons for and now the reason why I've been putting the familiars off is because they are so unique for a few different reasons. The most simple reason is if you're looking to keep a lot of loot and have a cheap run, or maybe you want a lot of kills and only plan to keep very expensive drops, or any combination between cheap runs, number of kills, and amount of loot you wish to keep. When I typically visit the dragons, I like to use a cheaper setup that will last me a decent amount of time, Therefore, I use a food setup and stock a war tortoise full of sharks will get me anywhere from 25 to 30 kills. If you want to focus on long trips with a lot of kills, then you will want to bring a unicorn, possibly a bunyip. Unicorns obviously being more efficient with the healing aura squirrels. 
and that were shown in my inventory. I only included these with the Ceridome and Bruce setups because typically you're aiming for killing a lot of dragons and not picking up a lot of items with that setup. But now when you make your way to the Mithril Dragons for the first time though, you will notice a whirlpool that you must jump into. And if you have a familiar summoned already, then it will not let you jump in. So most players like to simply only use healing familiars for this reason. But you can keep one pouch in your inventory, jump into the whirlpool, and then summon your familiar. Now you may wonder though how I stock my tortoise full of food down in the caverns. This is done by completing a series of events which can be done one of two simple ways. You will need to either get a hold of five bitter cat mushrooms and also complete the fairy tale part two. And buying the bitter cat mushrooms will usually take forever, so it is smart just to get 53 farming as well as a mushroom spore. And with this, you can plant the spore in the mushroom patch that is west of Canifus. Once grown, pick them. You should have five or six. If you do not have 53 farming, though, the cockroach soldiers will somewhat commonly drop the mushrooms. However you get them though, once you have five of them, grab them out of your bank as well as a spade, grab some decent gear and a bit of food, and then head down into the ancient caverns, but not quite towards Mythal Dragons yet, so don't worry about setting up an inventory, but once you are down here, there is a spot of enchanted soil to the western side of the caverns near a bunch of water fiends, so to smart to pray magic and turn off auto retaliate, and you will have the option to use the mushrooms on the soil which will grow a fairy ring, which you can then click to go to Xanaris, obviously. And at this point, most players will just like to stock up at the Grand Exchange, stock a familiar, and use the ring outside of the GE. Once in Xanaris, click the ring again and set the dials to say BJQ. This will take you straight to your new fairy ring, but before you go through, watch out for the water fiends and you might want to pray against magic. And the easiest way of all is the newly added ferocious rings which will just simply let you teleport to the new Slayer Master, Karadal, who is inside of the ancient caverns. These are obtained by accepting Slayer tasks from him and slaying the creatures in his dungeon. But now that we have spent an hour and a half getting you ready, let's go ahead and get to these things already. Once you have chosen your method of getting to the caverns, there will be a few ways to get to the dragons themselves. If you look at the map now, there's a red star to the north. This is where you come in from the Whirlpool entrance. The orange western star is from the Fairy Ring entrance, and the pink southern star is the ladder that you come from Karadal's entrance. All of the paths, though, lead to the circled ladder, which will lead you right up to the Mithril Dragons. And now that we are here, let's get fighting. I only have clips of me using melee method with a tortoise of food. I would include other clips, but I like to talk a lot and I kind of ran out of room to include clips of other setups. So now the only important thing you must do is remember which prayer to use. If using melee, use the melee prayer. And if using range or magic, use the range protection prayer. And if you are using range or mage, obviously stay out of their melee hitbox and do not forget to use your anti-fire potions. Once you have your prayer set and you're potted up, then start attacking. Go ahead and use your Karasi special if available as early in the fight as you can. The fight never changes through the battle, therefore these dragons are actually very simple. It is all about getting a good gear and inventory set up to make you last long down there, and that is why I spend so long on covering it in this guide. The best thing to do is simply just watch a few clips of me taking them on though I think, and I will keep a few more playing. I have already covered most of the tips. The only other things I can think of is just to simply watch your prayer and health. And I guess one last tip would be to don't be afraid to leech their defense as that helps out with any method you like to use greatly. But make sure you also have the prayer potions left to do so. But you should be set on everything else. So I hope you find some use in this guide and I wish you happy mithril dragon slaying. Please rate, comment, and subscribe for more guides like this in the future. Thanks for watching.